Hey, we're going live. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, is Cash Cash is gonna be in it? Oh, that's okay. Rick will probably come back and cry soon. All right, we are live. So no more putting on your face, Lara. Oh, come on, just a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me. It's such an honour and a privilege to be speaking to you, Long, like a lifelong friend now, and now we're doing this together. It's very exciting. No, it's one of those meant-to-be kind of things, I think. You can't escape me no matter where you go. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you. <laughs> so, um, I guess I really just wanted to have a chat today about um, who you are so that everybody knows and what your offering is and I guess what you're going to be, how you're going to be able to help people in the retreat and what you're really going to be able to do to help them move forward with some really serious momentum and create 2021 with a real bang. Yeah, sounds good. Well, the first question, who am I? That's a, you know, I'm still trying to work that out. Um, <laughs> no, <I'm only> joking. <laughs> we are. It's a it's a lifelong question. So basically, um, I am a lawyer. I've been a lawyer for um, a long time, um, but I'm now a performance and wellness coach. And um, basically what I do is I work with people um, to help them make shifts and changes in their lives and to really get to their desired outcome. Um, a lot of the times we know where we are and we know where we wanna go, but there's a lot of interferences that are in the way that are unconscious. So those interferences might be things like, you know, limiting beliefs about our potential. It could be conflicting parts to us. You know, there's a part of me that wants to go live this morning and there's a part of me that wants to put on more lippy <laughs> before I do that. <laughs> um, and, and there's, you know, and there's other kind of unconscious interferences that kind of keep us stuck. So I work with people on that level, also building resources, you know, what, what are the things that you need in order to get you to where you want to go? Like some people say to me, I just need more confidence or I need more motivation. Um, I need to trust myself. Um, I need to be kind to myself. I need self-love. These are all the things that we can build for you on an unconscious level. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of what I do has um, a basis in neuro-linguistic programming or NLP for short, um, which a lot of people are now starting to know about, which is really cool. But it's basically um, how the language of the mind runs those programs that run our everyday lives. Yeah. And we play around with that um yeah so on we'll talk about what i've got planned for the retreat <laughs> i guess that's what people would like to know so um i've got some ideas for the retreat so that we can really help you get over what we call this immunity to change so a lot of us have like i said this desire to to get to where we want to go and 2020 has um you know has gotten a lot of people stuck um, a lot of people's insecurities have surfaced. A lot of people's fears and doubts have given um, have been given a lot of airtime. Mm -hmm. And so I'm finding a lot of people this year, even though their situation hasn't really changed as far as their work environment or their families, there's still that fear that, oh, oh this could happen to me because it's happening to so many people around me. Mm -hmm. So that getting over that in, in 2021 is going to take a bit of work. Um, and, and not just 2021, moving forward, you know. Um, this, yeah, so this, this immunity to change is what I really want us to explore at the retreat. So what is it that keeps you where you are and keeps you immune from change? And we can play around with that a little bit. And definitely it is fear. I mean, why do we not, you know, do the things that we'd like to do? Why do, like, why do we stay in an unhappy job or an unhappy marriage or an unhappy workspace situation or whatever it might be that really doesn't make you happy or doesn't serve you the main reason most people stay is for fear of the unknown but ultimately when you step into whatever it is that you're really wanting and that you're yearning for I think you generally tend to find that it's so much more liberating you're so much happier you're more your true authentic self and in actual fact when you did all of those things that were stopping you from doing them in the first place 
you know, and you realize it actually wasn't so hard. It was all in my head. Like exactly. the thought process is harder than the action process most yeah. of the time. Yeah. And I think that's when you talked about um, those unconscious like beliefs and those, those little stories that we've either created from when we were babies or that we've taken on from our parents and then our parents have taken sort of lineage worth of these belief systems that we've created that are happening unconsciously that half the time we're not even aware of. So I feel like there's this, this common thread with all of the facilitators through everything we've talked about so far is about the more resources we have and the more conscious and aware we are of those little thought patterns and those things that are happening inside of our heads that the sooner we can change it. But I guess with what you do, because you're then creating new neural pathways, is that right? Yeah, so yeah, that's exactly right. So the work that we do actually reprograms the software of the mind. So there's this little analogy that if I can sort of share with everybody that helps explain how we work and what we do. If you think about your mind as being three tiered or three levels, you've got your conscious mind. So that's that mind that you're listening to me with right now. And you're making sense of what I'm saying. You're making it relate. You're trying to understand. You're judging me. You're, you're understanding, rationalizing. That's only 10% of your mind. The unconscious, deeper structure of your mind, that's the other 90%. And part of that 90% is also what we call your higher conscious mind, which is what a lot of energy healing and other kind of spiritual work taps into, which is a beautiful thing because that's where our intuition lives. That's where our higher purpose and the real truth of who we are lives. So what happens a lot of the time when people seek help um, from um, a coach or a psychologist or therapy of some sort that that doesn't dig deeper in the unconscious that doesn't go below the waterline is that we kind of stay on the, the surface you know we work on the cerebral level the the conscious level you know we put strategies in place and then we keep you accountable that only has so much effect it doesn't have the long-term change and shifts that we want so if you can think of your mind or your unconscious mind, so that 90% as the driver of the vehicle of your car. <laughs> no, <laughs> the vehicle of your life. I should have had a coffee. <laughs> and your conscious mind, so that's that 10% thinking mind, that sits in the passenger seat. And you drive around life. The unconscious mind does all the steering and all the driving. And it's been programmed to go in certain directions in certain ways because of you know, things that have been installed into our GPS from when we were little, you know, beliefs and values and patterns and models of the world and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But it's got its program. The conscious mind sits in the passenger seat and every now and then it says, you know what, I really need to turn left because I'm sick of going this way. I need to turn left. I need to go past the gym or I need to go, um, you know, change a, change a relationship, change a job because I'm sick of driving this way. So it grabs the steering wheel and it pulls it. And we use what's called willpower to do that. Mm -hmm. And we pull and we turn for a while. This is great. I've just got to keep pulling the steering wheel. I've got to keep using my willpower. Eventually, you know, this will become my new normal. And for a lot of people, it does. But then what happens when life gets difficult? What happens when COVID hits and we're, we're stripped down to our kind of survival brain? What happens when we get stressed, when we get tired, is that we let go of the steering wheel. So then what happens is the unconscious mind grabs the wheel back and says, thank you, we'll just keep driving the way we've always been driving. So that's an autopilot part of us. So the work I do and the way that I help people isn't so much the conscious mind isn't isn't working on the passenger as such, but it's actually working on the driver. So, so we rewire that really quickly. Sorry, but like what I found with what you're saying is when you're in, you can see patterns in relationships. So I think it's easier to sometimes see them in others more so than it is to see in yourself. Definitely. So when you you know those patterns of like well that you know that person just goes back to that subconscious pattern because that's their normal. So I think. Yeah, I just wanted to, I just felt like that was really relatable to, I, I can't, you can't, I can't often see it so much in myself because I am me, but I can see it in others a lot more clearly. 
Yeah, and 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 that's and that's normal too. Um, so really, the coaching that I do is helping you see it in yourself. Mm. A lot of the times, just being aware of the unconscious and bringing the unconscious into the conscious can sometimes create shifts by itself, on its own, without us having to go in and create new neural pathways or new neural connections to create new programs. Sometimes the unconscious mind just knows how to do that by itself. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I just, it's its really timely. I got a, an email this morning from a client that I've been working with for a while and she gave me some amazing feedback. And I thought I might share that with you today. But basically, um, this is just an example of some of the changes that people can go through. Um, she, whenever she needs to do some important work, she comes up with excuses, you know, things that pull her away from that task. So, I, you know, I've got to check with this person first or I've got to go and, you know, pay this bill first or I've got to do but they're all excuses to get away from this task that might be causing a little bit of maybe discomfort or fear or something so I did a bit of work with her and we did a process where she can basically um, on an unconscious level rewire those excuses that she uses to get away from the task mm -hmm. and to be able to recognize when it's an excuse and when it's a reason a legitimate reason you know, like I've got to eat because I really need to eat or is that just an excuse because I don't want to do this thing? So she sent me this email this morning that basically said she has stopped making excuses. She gets in and does the work that she needs to do and she's surprised by how much space and time her self-criticism was taking up that mm -hmm. she's now using to actually do the task itself and how much more productive and efficient she's being. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, that's that's amazing feedback because that's a rewiring of a program that wasn't serving her before, which now on an unconscious level, so now the driver of the vehicle just goes that way. Mm. doesn't have to pull so hard on the steering wheel. So that was really timely. I thought that's a great, great little email. I might share that with Lyndall <laughs> and everybody else. I mean, wow, you know, the fact that she, she now has more time to actually get stuff done because she's not spending it criticizing herself and procrastinating in the thought process she's now in the doing 100% 100% not only does it use up time but energy as well you know it, it uses up a lot of energy to beat ourselves down yeah. rather than using that energy to just get whatever it is done done yeah. You know? yeah yeah and I think we underestimate how much thinking takes up energy mm. um yeah like there's some days where I might not do much but I'll be exhausted by the end of the day because my brain's been on overdrive. So yeah, it uses, it actually uses calories. So it uses energy. So you can't get away from. Um, well, I should be as skinny as a stick. <laughs> I knew I walked right into that one. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I'm a big thinker. <laughs> it's oh. negative energy, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So yeah, that's really cool work. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to the retreat because especially in groups, you know, a certain level of energy is, um, yeah. is shared and it's really, um, it's supportive. You know, I've done a few of these now and it's, um, it's, it's a really cool environment to be in, you know, to, to get the support, to be able to share and to be able to open up. Yeah. Um, creates a lot of connection. It's a really yeah. powerful thing. Yeah. So a lot of what we've talked about is just one way or another, the people that end up coming together are all on a, the same or similar journey and going through similar kinds of things and wanting to shift similar things. And even when it's in the group, um, sometimes it's good because if you're not one that likes to express as openly, it gives you the opportunity to kind of get in there. You're still getting all of the benefits. But then everyone still gets that opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one to yep. dig a little deeper with the therapist or yep. um, practitioner that they really felt like aligned with. Yep. So, you know, like I've continued to say, I really feel like there's going to be massive transformations and shifts throughout the course of that weekend. Mm -hmm. And there will be something that will really push people outside of their comfort zone. And that is, I think, when really shifts and change happens. When we're doing the ordinary and the same things all the time, you know, you don't tend to kind of propel forward in, in a big way. No, no. We tend to live on the surface. That's what we do. You know, our everyday lives, even conversations, if you think about conversations that we have with people, they're very surface level stuff. You know, like how's the kids, how's the weather, how's work? Um, and that's really pretty much as deep as we go. I mean, you and I go a little bit deeper, <laughs> but there are some people that you do have those conversations with. 
but in general like those conversations I like the real ones <laughs> we like the authentic conversation so you know in general though we do even with ourselves we stay on the surface don't we like we say you know I'm tired or um, I just don't want to do this or you know why does this always happen to me and we don't go any further than that we just stay on that level mm-hmm. and, and the thing that I you know I've come to really understand about the way that the brain works is that it it is designed to give you answers, right? It's it's like a Google Drive. If you put put a question in over and over again, it will just give you an answer. Yeah. And I, you know, I used to when I was at uni, um, I used to um, <laughs> sit next to my friend who would at the time Google was it wasn't even Google. What was the first thing that came out? Not Yahoo ask Jeeves like that's how old I am but anyway it was when these search engines first came out we were like excited we didn't have to go to the library and photocopy you know tons of (laughs) boy anyway (laughs) so you know I'd sit there and I'd type in the question or type in something into the search bar and my friend would be doing the exact same assignment she'd type in her thing and then she'd get all these information Mm -hmm. I'm like what the hell we're doing the same thing right we're doing the same project but what I learned was that the way she asked the question got her a different response it's the same way our brain works so a lot of the times we ask lousy questions of ourselves you know why does this happen to me why can't why am I so disorganized I found myself asking that question this morning um hence why I was still putting lippy on when we first started talking (laughs) um you know why does this always happen to me why can't I get this right what's wrong with me and then the brain can't help but give you an answer so it's going to give you a shitty answer because you're asking a pretty shitty question Mm -hmm. So part of the coaching I do and part of the skill that I've learned is that if you re- reframe the question into something that can actually give you an answer that you can work with, then you know how to use your brain. You know how to drive this thing here. So how can I become more organised today? Now, I can yeah. answer that question. It's about being in the question. So this is also the same to be true for um access consciousness which is um the energy work that i do and it's always about being in the question when we're in the question how does it get any better than this how does life get any better than this then you're opening yourself up to the infinite possibilities of the universe but when we're always yeah when you, you don't ask the question it can't deliver and it can't come through more than just you know, there's, there's, it's, it's a dead end or it's, you know, exactly you answer at all. Exactly. So it is interesting the more that um, you open yourself up to these conversations and these, and these and people and um, especially in this kind of in this conscious realm, whether it's like a very scientific based or a energetic healing base, it always comes back down to the same fundamentals. You know, it's, it's what are we thinking? What are we putting out there to the world? Like how conscious of we are we of what we're thinking and how we're thinking because what we think, you know, we create. 100%. Yeah? 100%. Yeah. Where, where focus goes, energy flows. So, exactly. like, it's all just about, I think, that's why I, I created the event and I've brought in so many different modalities and teachers because there isn't a one-size-fits-all and not everybody thinks the same way. And, you know, the way that you teach might go over some people's heads but then the way that someone else teaches in the way of it's not it's less less verbal it just clicks in and they get it it's exactly um, right they, you know I think whichever way you look at this the modalities kind of all point towards a similar or the same thing yeah. and you know I chose NLP um, because it worked for me mm. and so you know it works for people who maybe have the same way of thinking you're right or the same um kind of level of being for example you know I coach a lot of lawyers because that's my backyard and a lot of a lot of lawyers um haven't kind of tapped into their spirituality or that other dimension of themselves Mm -hmm. higher conscious mind so they're very much stuck in the conscious the unconscious is obviously there but they just don't know anything about it so they work on this kind of 10 percent so NLP, you know, NLP works with energy, it works with higher consciousness, it works with all those realms. Yep. But I can, I can kind of, what's the word? I can tailor it yep. for the person so that they can understand it and on whatever level they are at. 
Yeah. So, you know, it's not it's not spiritual woohoo stuff if we're talking about software and programming of the mind. But if somebody's more spiritual and is more into energy, then they're going to tap into that as we do the work. Yeah. So it's, that's why I love NLP so much because it kind yep. of does cater for different. Yeah. Levels. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And like I said, I really feel like. And everyone that comes is going to get something out of it, massive. Like, there is no doubt in my mind there is going to be shifts and transformation. Like it just is not possible that you won't get a shift or transformation within yourself. So, yeah, that's what I'm most excited for, for everybody that, that joins us. 100%. And, and can I just add, I'm just going to add one more thing because this is something else that I've noticed in 2020 if I can. Do we have time? Yep, go for it. <laughs> cool. Um, I think the biggest takeaway for me from, from 2020 is that as human beings, we can very easily go into survival because that's what we're kind of um, designed we're like to do. Essentially. Exactly. We're meant to, to survive. So when life gets tough, when a pandemic hits and our health is at stake, you know, people go into that survival mode. You know, it's that fight or flight. So a lot of stress is happening and a lot of um, stress response is happening, happening. So as we know, and you know this as well, whenever we're stressed or we're in survival, you know, our cortisol levels rise, oh. our blood pressure changes, oh. our heart rate, our breathing and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. So we're now in November of 2020 and we've been, a lot of people have been in this survival, especially, you know, people have been in lockdown longer than others and there's a threat of a second and a third wave and a threat of finance, you know, economic and all that sort of stuff. We've been in survival for quite a while. So you might now feel possibly a little bit burnt out because chronic stress over a period of time can create that burnout feeling. Yeah. So when you think about it, we're not meant to be running away from danger for prolonged periods. Of no, it's meant to be spurts. Exactly. Yeah. You know, when, it, when a deer is running away from a tiger, it does that for 15 minutes. It does what it needs to do. It shuts down its immune system. It shuts down its digestive yep. system. Yep. Gets away. And then hopefully it gets away. When it gets away, then it goes back to its... its I'm actually glad you brought that up because we do the same thing. Yeah. But when we are constantly running at that high levels of cortisol and, you know, high levels of stresses, which so many of us are doing these days because of our lives and the pressures we put on ourselves. Especially and you do have adrenal fatigue and you do have all of these autoimmune diseases and all these yeah. extra pressures on the body because of all of these outside, you know, and I've do, done a lot of work around all of this over the years as well. So I'm really aware of yeah. how it affects you. And then it's, you know, okay, what do we need to do to, to, to go back from that? So that's where, you know, yeah investing in yourself which is essentially what this weekend is going to be about to help you move through 2021 exactly right. and beyond exactly right so this weekend is about let's stop running let's stop fighting or yeah. running away let's get out of that survival mode and let's get back into and tap into our resources because yeah. they're all there but when we're in survival we actually lose access mm -hmm. to a big chunk of our resources mm -hmm. Um, so when we can step out of that survival mode, and it, it's a mindset thing, right? Because, I mean, you know, there's always going to be danger and things, but it's very rarely is it, is it you know, like a truck coming at you where you might die or, you know. I mean, COVID has been pretty dangerous in the sense that it has killed people. Yeah. But in our minds, we can, we believe it's, you know, it's at our doorstep sort of thing, you know, walking around, people are wearing masks and sanitizing, like, oh my God, what if it's on this handle? You know, what if, what if this person has it and they've just breathed on me? So there's that kind of imminent threat of danger in our minds. Yeah. And so when we can kind of change that mindset and realize that, you know, we're okay, then a whole, you know, gamut of resources opens up to us and then we can make better decisions and, um, and move forward um, in a much more resourceful way. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Well, I think we'll leave it on that note because that was an absolute nugget of gold. <laughs> and I think you really summed up, you know, really what people are going to be able to get moving into, you know, this space and why the investment for themselves is so important because it is an investment when you choose to make better decisions for yourself and that you really want to make a difference in your own life for the sake of you and everyone around you. So, 
Yes, thank okay. you. Thank you. Awesome. And I will share all of this. If anyone has any questions additionally, uh, Lara will be linked onto it and she can answer them. If not, I hope you have a fabulous day and anybody watching. And thank yes. you again. A great day. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>